Can all please rise, join palms. So just want to uh, welcome everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you for showing up tonight on such short notice. We appreciate it. We confirmed this this morning. Uh, Rick Loche came all the way to San Diego to visit us uh, this morning. So we appreciate you all being here. Uh, Rick Loche, thank you for, for being here. Uh, as I always say, good luck with all of these people. And, and Doma here will do the translation for us as well. So thank you very much. So good evening, everyone, and thank you to Jeff for inviting me and giving me this great opportunity to uh, agree, again, give a brief talk on Buddhism. Let's first of all contemplate uh, for a few minutes and what we uh, are going to contemplate about uh, is two lines. The two lines being, may all sentient beings be happiness and the causes to happiness. And the second line is, may all sentient beings be separated from all forms of suffering 
including the causes for all those sufferings. And let's contemplate on these two lines for a few minutes. So during this meditation of contemplation, we are going to concentrate on those two lines, and the two lines again is for the benefit of all sentient beings. May all of them be free of all forms of suffering and all the causes for those sufferings, and may all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the causes for those um, happiness. And think about that. Contemplate on this while we're meditating. Okay, start. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so let's do this first. Let's all think together. May all sentient beings be separated from all forms of suffering. So next, from the depths of your heart, uh, contemplate on may all sentient beings be able to meet with happiness. So now all of us here gathered here this evening, now we have set the proper motivation for us to listen to tonight's lecture. So, uh, so for instance, when we are reciting mantras, sometimes reciting mantras, you have to think about the meaning of the mantras you're reciting, think about the words itself when you're reciting the mantras. 
Whereas if you actually do a mala of the, um, the two lines that I just said, you could be actually reciting those two lines instead of a mantra, it could be actually be more beneficial and contemplate on those meanings. So you could be say, you know, you could be reciting, for instance, may all sentient beings be able to meet with all forms of happiness. May all sentient beings be separated from all forms of suffering and say that again and again. And slowly, when you start to do this, then you start to actually then develop loving kindness towards others. So for instance, um, whether you develop loving kindness towards others or the loving kindness that I develop towards others, they're both equally the same. Though that type of loving kindness is the pure loving kindness towards all sentient beings. So the loving kindness of um, that, that is developed by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are no different. The, the actual nature of the loving kindness is no different from the loving kindness that we may develop towards um, other sentient beings. So then you may ask, what is the difference? My love, so the difference between the loving kindness of Buddha's body cycles and God, for instance, is the nature of the loving kindness is the same. The difference is the extent of that loving kindness. For our extent, uh, our loving kindness only extends to our loved, um, uh, our family and loved ones, uh, those are close and nearby. Whereas the loving kindness of the Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and gods, and the uh, the the object of their loving kindness is infinite. They have loving. They have developed that loving kindness towards all others. <laughs> So if we can extend our loving kindness and our compassion uh, towards uh, more living beings, then oh, so the greater that you can extend that loving kindness and compassionate mind, um, the broader that you spread it, then it will bring about more um, a mental well-being for you. So all of us here, um, we are equally the same in terms of wanting happiness, do not want suffering. The only difference is we are wearing different types of clothing. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> maybe the clothes may be different, but I think some of them, some of you may share the same old headedness that I have. <laughs> yes, okay. How would you do? Just a time, Manzuki, Ninjiti, Gatchemo, Kazu, Tam, Gray, and Zinka, 
And why do we wish to extend our compassion towards all living beings? It's because all sentient beings have been very kind to us, or they've been very beneficial to us. For example, um, every individual has a unique quality in them. So if we can cultivate that uh, altruistic motivation, which we call Vaichita, which is a Mahayana motivation, which is may all living beings meet with happiness and may all living beings be separated from sufferings is the, uh, the mind of the, which we refer to as altruistic motivation. So, bodhicitta, if you are able to cultivate bodhicitta, you don't have to be a Mahayana to cultivate bodhicitta. So, so if you can actually cultivate that uh, thought that may all living beings meet with happiness, may all living beings be separated from suffering, is bodhicitta or the altruistic motivation. So if you can cultivate that on a daily basis, then the, bond, then the mind becomes very powerful. And all of us experience anger, and there are um, nine different sort of um, causes for our anger to arise. <laughs> Isn't the main cause of our mental um, stress or suffering, isn't it anger? Is that true or not? Is anger the root of a lot of our problems? Yes. So anger comes from uh, nine different sources or nine paths. So, so one becomes angry when someone inflicts harm upon you at this present moment. Isn't that true? Yes. And then the second, the second uh, path is, okay, so that person has harmed me in the past, and you get angry, correct? Correct? Yes. Yes. So then the third is that person is going to be hard, is going to harm me in the future and you get angry. Well, that person is going to take my job away from me. That person is going to compete, you know, with me, and so forth. And you get angry. Yes. True. Yeah. That thing. That social reserve. I. The next, my friend. That nigga, Gabriel. 
So first, you get angry because uh, the harm is being inflicted upon you. Next, you get angry because the harm is being inflicted upon your loved ones. The reason why uh, we are concerned about ourselves is because we think we are the most important. So in the world, in this world, we consider ourselves the most important. That's why we say we get angry when people harm us first. So next is you get angry because this individual is inflicting harm upon my friend or my family member or my loved one. For instance, that person took my friend's job away from him, or that person is actually uttering really harsh words towards my friend, and so you get angry that way. So the second is that person was really bad, to, you know, was really harmful to my friends and loved ones. He took he took my friend's job away, he stole money from my friend and so forth, and you get angry at that individual because of that. And third is that person is going to do harm, harm in the future towards my friend. It's going to, you know, he's attempting to steal that job away from my friend. That uh, um, that person is trying to really, um, um, really try to inflict harm upon my friends, and so then you get angry again. True. Yes. That so now the last set of three, the reason is um, to your enemies, for instance. First is, oh, that person is really becoming good friends with my enemy. That person is talking to that, that person that I don't like, the one I consider an enemy. That person is talking to him, going with them, and then you get angry. And the second reason is that person has really helped my enemy, has really, you know, been going out with my enemy and uh, helping that, assisting that enemy a lot, and you get angry again. And last is that you get angry at the individual because, oh, he's planning to help him in the future. He's planning to go out to dinner with that person. He's planning to talk to him. And so then you get angry for, you know, future deeds that he's going to um, engage in with your enemy. 
，工作永远，照图是考了土地儿，爱，土地儿，所以说你身上的爱，社交吧，那社交，不停的土地儿。So all these nine、um, are the causes, but they actually depend upon our、uh, big ego, our you know the sense of I, and so that is the、uh, the the root of our anger. Just that the I the cause of Chungul Chibai na the Gusky ani Chungya Chingya na the Tapshe Yuna mena Tamlang Yuna mena the Changju Sen the place. 장주생들가족상어땅도있나아니아이디초초에서양치지 So this ego or this sense of I, this self cherishing thought,、uh, as long as that's strong, is a source of our anger. So if you are able to decrease that ego, decrease that sense of self cherishing thought, and then uh, then uh, anger will not easily arise. And the method for decreasing that self-cherishing attitude is the cultivation of body chitta or the cultivation of that altruistic motivation. 其实，我让做缺气的药呢，两个药呢，对，常常爱的，常常生的，生活当中头呢，安尼缺点，安尼所说的牛毛结啊的，当家的主要就来源是。So、um, we may say we are engaged in our dharma practice, but if you don't take time or pay attention to the cultivation of body chitta and、uh, work in terms of、uh, decreasing that self-cherishing attitude, then that dharma practice could actually be a cause for bringing about more negative emotions. Chesa manzu. I the chore time to be Mister Ketchumber. What is your dream car is not better. I the dream that better. My own to be same job is some time by now. Example, the man to some time man. You are bad. Some of your time mala be miji. You do jealous. You are bad. I'm not happy. Yeah, yeah. Then my kid will be in charge. You are bad. That's all. Your family no good, bad. I'm not happy. Yeah, some of you are. Then your friend no good, bad. I'm not happy. No. Then your relations no good, bad. I'm not happy. Yeah. Your country no good, bad. To do the same thing. How much? How much? Two thousand. The same thing. Then yeah, 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 yeah. See where you are. Last. You are that can I get double in this? That be charge him. Can I get double in this? Yeah, but me do do just like that. Kumbu chicks are one. Ah, that thing yeah, double in this. Now lo yeah, do you see? Can I get get up this? Yeah, but Maria do just like that. Ah, give me that. Thing yeah, do get up now lo yeah, do can I get religion this? Ah, yeah, but me do do just like that. Why give me that? Thing yeah, now lo do can I get Nadi di desa ni, nadi dia mau minta tu jatuh. Macam macam. Tapi ya, nampol jadi susu ke gabung ni pun dia mesti dia mau minta tu jatuh. Macam macam. Tapi ya, ya jadi nampol kita nang mesti dia mau minta tu jatuh. Macam macam. Tapi ya, so 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 tu na, sama ni kira dia mau minta tu jatuh. Tu sah di mana tu dia. So it's very important to work at decreasing that sense of I or this self cherishing attitude. So, if somebody says to you, "Oh, you're bad," right away you feel hurt. You get really you you get really upset, right? Even if somebody says your your friend is bad, you get upset. Or your religion is bad, you get upset. And then your country is bad, you get upset. So, if you think in terms of、um, so your response to all these,、um, you think about, for instance, if somebody says your world is bad, the world the whole world is bad, you you would. Probably have the sense of you know feeling bad and angry, and then somebody says, "Oh, your country is bad." You will also、um, get uh, uh, angry, and then similarly, somebody says, well, "Your religion is bad," or your you know、um, your the state that you're living in is horrible. It's not a good state, for instance, or your friends are bad, your your family is bad. So, and then finally, you're bad. So all of these 
really the sort the where it hurts is your self cherishing attitude that it hurts, right? 세상, so then who is the best one in the world? <laughs> Me. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Who is the best? Me. Yeah. Oh dear. Huh? Not each other down to Tene? So if you're able to work at decreasing that ego or that decreasing that sense of self-cherishing attitude, then it, it doesn't matter uh, whether somebody says anything about your religion, country, um, friends, whatever. It will not. It will not um, be the cause to your anger. Ah, example. Yeah, you have one more example. All the best who me. Yeah. I get the super name. Now I am willing to do super action. Super 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 action. Super super super. That action is not enough. Right? That action is not enough. Who is the best person in the world? Me. Who is the best looking person in the world? Me. Yes. Right. My body, yes, all the best. My body, in that insight, or the namlone get you your kare. So, what is the most important part of my body? Ah, kamba mena, kamba leta lapayaktus. So instead of my hands, I think my 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 hands are most more important. Yeah, kamba mena, kamba mena kamba mendo lapa mena this two hands. If I don't have any legs. Uh, it's okay. As long as I have my hands, I can probably function. Okay. Yes. So, okay, then you get rid of your legs, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> so, you just have the upper torso with your arms, right? Yeah. So then if somebody says, okay, what's most important to you in the of your torso? And then you go, okay, if I don't have my head, I you know, I just can't function. So it's okay if I didn't have anything, right? As long as I have my head. Yes. Ears. Ears. Yeah. So then you go, okay, what's important about my head? It's okay if I don't have my ears. It's okay if I don't have my mouth. As long as I can see. Don't. So if I don't have my eyes, I can't I can't see the you know, I can't stay in darkness. So it's all like our perception or how we think, right? Because if you disassemble everything, really there's nothing you can pinpoint, you know. So then you know you have your five senses. As long as my mind is happy or at peace, I don't care about my senses. Just only the so when you really think about it, we tend to say, you know, as long as my mind is at peace, I don't care about everything else. It doesn't matter whether I have good food or whether I'm able to listen to good music or, and so forth. Yeah. So what is the source of, what is the, um, what is the thing that could actually make you experience a sense of mental peace? Is the cultivation of uh, bodhicitta or the altruistic motivation? So, 
the uh, bodhicitta uh, is actually the method uh, that is that is part of the out of the four noble truths is the uh, the truth of the path. So then you may, um, in terms of uh, wishing, all happy, uh, all sentient beings, uh, may they all experience happiness. The reason is because we have to think about how kind uh, other sentient beings are. What is the purpose for us being born into this world? We are here to benefit others. We are here to help others. I take myself as an example as a Buddhist monk. I, I consider that my purpose in life is to help others. The reason I study my, uh, the Dharma scriptures is because um, is to help others. So even if I was a Christian, for instance, my sole purpose of being a Christian would be to help others, to help, you know, to be of benefit to others. So if you look hard enough, you will be able to find qualities in all living beings, qualities in every individual. And if you think of the qualities of all individuals, then you will think of in terms of how kind uh, each individual is. <laughs> For instance, everyone in this room has a special quality that I don't have. If we just go around the room, you will be able to find a unique quality in each and every one of you. Just like, for instance, when we say that person is bad, that person is not bad in its entirety. Because of some small fault in that individual, we label that individual as, as a bad person. Similarly, if we're able to cultivate bodhicitta, you will find qualities in others, then therefore the opposite happens. You will find goodness in that individual. So, for instance, the bad person that we have labeled as a bad person does not truly exist because it's, it's our perception of that individual. For instance, if you take, let's say, I took, uh, um, I had a candy, and I took, you know, I took that candy, and the, and the flavor that I experienced would be totally different for every single individual. If I was to ask, you know, if I was to say, okay, it's not very hygienic, but anyway, if I, you know, ate that candy and I passed it around the room and everybody had a bit of the candy and asked everyone to write down their what they uh, what they tasted, each of each and every one of us would have a different experience. <laughs> For instance, the candy 
Some people would say, oh, well, this candy tasted horrible. This candy tasted bad. This tasted really good. It's okay, so forth. So it's the same candy, but different experiences. Similarly, a bad individual does not inherently exist as a bad individual. It's our perception of that individual. Continuous. Tindi indi me ki kansa soso ki samlo ki tamcho tam kansa soso ki namto ba tindi ani ko me ki to wan tam lo wan to se ni bui ba tindi manzo ki me to jia se ti zawa ni ni yong ba pe cha cha ba ina zong kan nang la tindi ki tan de ki chi ki me chi yo ba ina koran la tong ma yin pe ki yu de chi ko ba es pe ni me chi me man bo chi se ba ki me chi yin ba yu ba ina Korangi Mimango save the Kuki Kuki Chadi already, he named Korang Rangla, Tomo Maimbe Rangi Amala Tsevi Kitsawati, Shellum Nilaj Yores. So every, um, so every one of us um, perceives things differently because of our own mental disposition and then our own uh, perception. And an example, for instance, let's say a prisoner is in prison for having killed somebody. Um, so that's a crime, but there is also a, a, a quality, a good quality in that individual, which would be um, uh, the, the, the loving kindness that that individual may have for his, own, his or her own mother, for instance. So really, there is no single person that wants to be treated or seen in negative Bedamadanamdesi so we have to uh, think in terms of all um, all living beings as being kind to us. And if you can think in that way, that actually is then thinking of the noble truth of the path. Uh, the, out of the four noble truths, noble truth of suffering, uh, causes to suffering, and the truth of the path, and then there's the truth of cessation, right? Truth of cessation and truth of path. So if we can think of all living beings as being kind, that could belong to the, uh, the path, uh, the truth of the path. And then if you can, um, if you are able to find a temporary relief from mental uh, stress and mental agitation, then that would be a, a sort of a temporary uh, a sort of truth of cessation. So this is a very sort of a basic sort of introduction to the Four Noble Truths with, uh, with some examples that I've shared with you. And so a truth of suffering is basically talking about all forms of suffering, suffering of suffering, suffering of change and so forth. So whatever mental suffering or physical suffering that one undergoes will belong to the truth of suffering. And then uh, the causes of suffering uh, we, re we refer to as karma or the law of cause and effect. Um, so this is like a really brief um, basic introduction to the Four Noble Truths. Uh, it will 
probably be best if I now stop talking and uh, if you have any questions, it might be better if I actually answer questions from the audience. I have a technical one too, okay? Don't be shy. You can ask me any questions. Anybody need a microphone? <laughs> So, if uh, if there is, I, I you know, people are big ideas conceptually. I'm with you know experiences necessarily subjective and there is no bad person there is just your perception of that person and they can be different things to different people the the easy example i think is to put that in a negative connotation doesn't that logically also follow that there is no good person either because i mean i don't know i don't think anybody hates me maybe somebody hates me but you know, I can be a good person to my mom and a bad person to somebody else. So, like, how do we how do we think about you know good people as well within that kind of framework? Maranzo so our biggest problem is that we, as humans, are conditioned to think more negatively than positively. For instance, if we find fault in somebody, in some negative aspect of that individual, we tend to think of it uh, as an overwhelming fault with that individual and label that person. And it's really difficult for, uh, for any of us to actually see something good in others. And even if we find something good or a good, or like a quality in, in an individual, it's very difficult to transfer, transfer that quality to an overwhelming sort of like a goodness of that individual. Like the opposite of how we tend to think of uh, a, a bad person. If we find something negative in a person, we tend to think of that person as overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly negative or a bad person. But we can't seem to do the opposite in terms of we find a good quality in an individual. We can't think of it, we can't tend to think of that individual as, as a good person. Benna, example. Oh, that's a ruling dinama. Who is the bad? Best. Who is we, who is the best? All the sentient beings. My mom is the, all the best. Okay. So if we ask ourselves, who is the best person in this world? We can say, oh, maybe my mom. Best. And you tell a thing, you think it's some not angry. You tell a thing, you think it's some not angry. My friend, he is angry. Why? Your mom only best friend, best man. My mom is best. So if my friend was sitting next to me, if he heard me saying, my mom is the best person in the world, my friend would be quite upset. Why? My mother is equally good. Yeah. Yes. That's an example. This is a good example. I cannot say, do you can do this? I cannot say, do you can do this? So, for instance, if I raise my hand, and I said, okay, which is the front and which is the back? Which is the front and which is the back? You are you are tall? This so one. you're going to say this is the back, right? I think, no, this is this on the back. 
This is a French. So to me, this is the French, right? Yes. Just Aransu ke samlo tang tang ki, Aransu ke tangye chama namto ke sem ke sweet shakyores. So uh, all our um, thinking, uh, the perceptions, comes from our thoughts and how we perceive things. Samlo tang me sweet shakyores. Just Aransu ke samlo tang me yaku samlo tang thuna. So, for instance, because everything comes from our thoughts and how we perceive things and think things through, then if you are able to cultivate this um, bodhicitta or this altruistic motivation or mindset, then whatever problems arise, you can actually overcome the mental stress that it brings you. So, for instance, the person that we consider bad is seen as a very good person by his family. He's seen as a good person by his friends. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so, once I have a bodhicitta practice, yeah. I'm responsible for the thoughts I choose. So if you're able to cultivate bodhicitta properly, then whatever thoughts, whatever kind of thoughts you have, will then start to decrease. For instance, then you will see qualities in all religions of the world. Then you will have respect for all living beings or all uh, each and every individual that you meet. And that's how we bring about a more peaceful world. So I have, um, so I have trouble staying in the present moment. My mind is always kind of going to next thing, next thing, next thing. Occasionally I'll catch, catch it, but within seconds it's somewhere else. Uh, do you have any suggestions for how to? I mean, if somebody come up with a different thing, those, and then somebody just need to get a couple of shoes, those top shoes, carry on those. Tatisimtijo so for agitated mind, when your mind is wandering all over the place, in order to uh, so the easiest practice uh, is a general practice we refer to as the breathing um, meditation. And here, you can just basically try to concentrate your mind on the inhaling and the exhaling and actually count the inhale in through your right nostril and then exhale through the left nostril as one count and then repeat that. You know, you can do six counts, seven counts. And basically what it does is it's taking the mind uh, from wandering all over the place and trying to place it on the breath. So it's focusing on the breath so it stops wandering. So that's one basic kind of uh, tool to stop the mental agitation. So in terms of mental concentration, which helps with uh, uh, overcoming mental agitation or mental wandering, 
is to do these uh, breathing meditation uh, where you count the breathing in and breathing out. And then to the point where if it gets too tiring, you have to rest. Otherwise, then your mind becomes agitated again. It's going to start wandering. So if you can take a few minutes in the morning, at noon, and in the evening, and do these um, breathing uh, exercises and breathing med meditation, it will help you to achieve um, uh, more concentration. And then the mind is less agitated and so will actually wander less. <laughs> Any other questions? Yep, in the back. So, if my mom, who I'm very close to, and I love very dearly, and I really, uh, who I love dearly, and I have a great attachment to her, um, as you probably do to your mother, and then I see a child that dies in Africa of hunger, and both of them cause me great pain, but it's my attachment to my mother that, you know, that we try to acknowledge and say this is causing me pain because of my attachment and honoring that but they both are equal how do we as humans kind of get over that attachment to what we love dearly and say it's the same it's just that you have an attachment so cross with the lady so the child, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part. The child that dies of famine in Africa? Yeah, he died, the child dies of hunger. Right. It's a death. It's, you look at it and it's sad and it's suffering. You know, it's suffering. Um, and it causes you, you know, to see it causes you great pain. Right. But it's different than the pain that you have for like your mother that dies. But it's oh, because okay. you have an attachment to that. Okay. How do we get over our attachments? Um, that's why I'm a drama teacher. I'm a dancer, a shooter, boss. And the, 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 the so for your mom, for all of us actually, our mother's one goal is probably for us to become good human beings. And so if our goal, if our mom's goal was for us to become good human beings, and when that mother passes away, how can we actually repay the kindness that she has shown us and to fulfill her wishes? is to work towards becoming a good person. So, I mean, um, you can cry, you can grieve, but then you'll run out of Kleenex and so forth, and it doesn't really serve any purpose. But rather, to honor uh, your mom, the best thing to do is to work towards being a better person. Yeah, my, the better Christian, Muslim, all the God, right? Kunjoki 
So it doesn't matter what religion you are. Uh, the purpose of all religions, whether it's Muslim, Hindu, um, and so forth, Buddhist, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. The goal of any religion is for that practitioner to be a good human being. And so to, you know, as long as you can, all of us can strive towards becoming good human beings, you're fulfilling whatever the doctrines say, right, of any religion. Today, you guys are meeting in Malachua Jesus, Korangi Gabu Sevoro Gabu Jesus, or he, and the church can be linked in his, Kurpe, Ninja Chebo, and the best in Jim, and the soft job they were conditioned in Slevitus, and Ko Kalcha or his mother, Ko and the church can be linked in Jerry, my church can be numbered in the Kalcha or the Sos. Keep your minds. Have a good job with what it is. To you is. So earlier we had, um, she met with a group of people and uh, one individual asked a question and he said, he had a friend who does a lot of good work and help you know, the homeless and uh, help the needy, but doesn't believe in any religion. So this person was very concerned. And so she said, it doesn't matter if he doesn't believe in any religion or not. Just the mere fact that he's helping the needy and helping members and helping the homeless and so forth is more than enough. He doesn't need a religion. And so that alone is, is, is really good. <laughs> and that is actually what God, Allah, you know, um, the Creator, that's what their whole purpose is to have individuals to be of service to others. Example, I'm operation now, I'm operation. Good, I need good. Let's say if I got really sick and I need surgery. Surgery, I need a good doctor. I need a good doctor. Yes. At that time, oh, my doctor is religion, Buddhism, <laughs> uh, Christian, uh, Muslim. Ah, oh, no, don't need. No. No way. You know what? I'm so when I'm really sick and I need and I need a doctor right away and have need surgery, I'm not gonna go asking, oh, is that a Buddhist doctor? I just need somebody who's gonna save my life, right? Yeah. So we have to consider that whoever is kind to us, who has benefited us, and who's you know showering us with loving kindness, that person is they're truly very kind to us. We would consider them, right? And now we're also keep with the day on the COVID nineteen. Then now that finish, yeah. That COVID nineteen is a big issue. Rasulullah Tamni, since then, cancer mango chowing, get come down mango. Then now we're like. So, for instance, take the example of COVID-19. It was not an isolated incident. It hit us globally. And then to help us overcome this pandemic, it was all these individuals across the globe who worked tirelessly, regardless of whether they were, you know, uh, religious or non, you know, believer or non-believers, regardless of what country they're in, they all work tirelessly together so we can all overcome this illness. So they've all been truly kind to us, and we've all benefited. So then we have to think in terms of how kind all these individuals have been to us. Chesatanamati so 
which is a debate object. So another example, for instance, I'm staying currently staying in a hotel down in Anaheim, and right from the balcony of this hotel outside my room, I can see the highway, the freeway, and it's nonstop. There's cars going on that freeway nonstop, not even for a split, you know, minutes. Like it's constantly um, being used. So when you consider all those individuals driving on that highway are in pursuit of some form of happiness, right? And then that is not possible if all those individuals who are responsible for building that highway, so many people came together to make that possible. Tomorrow I'm died. Let's say tomorrow if I die. Died. But this way, no empty, huh? That road is still going to be used continuously. So that road is never going to stop being used. So it's a different experience when you're actually on that highway in a car driving compared to when you're looking down at that highway and seeing how it's used and then contemplating on, you know, how all so many, uh, countless number of people were responsible for, you know, making that road possible. <coughs> so, have a, give it some thought. You know, it depends on how, you know, from what, from your perspective, right? So all those individuals driving on that highway are in pursuit of some form of happiness. And I'm sure it's not just for the physical well-being, but also for their mental well-being. You are going to an airport. Many people. Even when you go to the airport, you see countless numbers of travels coming in, going out, right? Transportation. Yeah. Same thing. Bus ten. <laughs> so, um, so when you're at these kind of places. You know, take a sort of step back and have a look at it, and then think in terms of all those individuals going back and forth. They're all in pursuit of some form of happiness. They they don't want any any kind of suffering, and they're all in pursuit of not just physical well-being but also mental well-being. And finally, it really comes down to a sense of mental well-being. So the best method for cultivating or uh, experiencing a mental well-being is through the cultivation of bodhicitta. Yes. So I'm talking to you from my own personal experience. It's very beneficial if you can cultivate that kind of mindset. For instance, if you were to even study the scriptures, um, the Buddhist scriptures, just studying the scriptures is of no benefit to one's mind. I studied the Buddhist scriptures for about 30 years. I entered the monastery when I was two years old. So I finally got this sort of sense that later on, that by cultivating bodhicitta, I can actually then achieve some sort of mental well-being. This is what I found. My monastery, my monastery, your monastery is bad, my monastery is good, my religion is good, your religion is bad. So otherwise, if you don't cultivate bodhicitta, what happens is even if you, you know, consider yourself a practicing Buddhist, 
it just becomes a source of more suffering or more just mental disturbance because then you go, my monastery is better or my monastery is this, their monastery or temple is that. And so all of this sort of, you know, um, uh, thoughts arise, which gives rise to more mental disturbance. So I just want to actually share my personal experience with you. Yes. Okay. Any chance to come from the specific Buddhist Jeff, 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 short story in my chef's soon soon's. Listen, I'm a bit missing a couple of chums, Kadisha, but Simjim, Riso Machiba, Simjim, Father Mavaria, and in Padoche. So before we um, came upstairs, we were downstairs, and Jeff was explaining about you know how this uh, center came about and all the work that's you know been done over so many years by the center and so Richie says that he was just so appreciative of all the work that Jeff has done and he wants to thank you for all the community service and how you've helped thousands of people over so many years and he said that's such a great quality in you to be of such a great service to the community and that's something that I can even do he says. <laughs> Because a Chinese speaking, there's a Chinese saying which we will say. Let's see the best set on the table to one. Also, put out the shirt, how to sort of talk. Just the other shirt, how to go to a chance. Need chimmer to a day. What I can't get out to you, he can do. Need chimmer to a day, only not to a day, only in there. Which is then a very great quality of Jeff. Yeah. Then you can you push it with us. So it's not just sweet words, empty words. I'm speaking from the depths of my heart that I rejoice in your good deeds. So when I say good, you know, go look for the goodness in others, I don't mean, oh, is that person educated? Is that person this? Is that person that? Just look in terms of what is that person doing that I can't do. So I feel that it's very important if we can all sort of make a pledge or a commitment that when you meet a person, from the time you meet a new person, you say to yourself, from this day forward, I have met this individual. I will always consider this person as a friend until I die. So if you can make that kind of pledge, it's very good. Yes. <coughs> so usually with any Dharma Buddhist practice, at the end we dedicate the merits from our session. So I'd like to dedicate the merits of this session that we just had shared together. <laughs> Chicky <laughs> So 
So when we say dedication, um, what one should think about is whatever merits that we have created through this evening's dialogue discussion that we just had, may all these merits go towards, for instance, for the long life and the fulfillment of the goals of all the religious leaders of the world and all those individuals in the world who do good for our communities and then also all those individuals who are building schools, hospitals, the roads, the bridges, all those things that are necessary in the world, may all those individuals live long and be able to fulfill their goals it does not matter what religion they are, whether they're believers, non-believers, it does not matter. And then finally, if we can dedicate the merits for the benefit of all living beings, I will strive towards enlightenment or Buddhahood for the benefit of all living beings. And thank you all for giving me this opportunity for creating merits. Thank you so much. is it only naked to a Thank you so much. So, uh, before you all head out, I just want to briefly uh, say thank you so much, Mpoche, for being here. Uh, now that I have met you, you are my friend and teacher for life. So, <laughs> <laughs> And you no need, uh, no need to teach a friend. <laughs> Make him friend. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, our Dharma Bum host Eddie will do a few announcements before y'all head out. <coughs> Hello, everyone. I'm tonight's host Eddie. And we opened the Dharma Bum Temple 17 years ago to introduce Buddhist practice to those who show up. Those who lead are not nuns, monks, gurus, masters, or teachers, and are not looking for students. They are simply practitioners sharing their interpretation of the practice. Tonight, we have different classes led by different people from various Buddhist traditions. We have a recovery sangha that meets several times a week for anyone with addiction, and our food redistribution program is every Thursday at 5 p.m. We have classes and programs every day, and everything we offer here is always free. The full schedule is on our website and also posted in the entryway above the shoe rack. We have a lending library. If you see a book you like, feel free to borrow it and then bring it back whenever you are done with it. Please straighten your seat or cushion before you head out. If a few people could stay and close and latch the windows, that would be helpful. Thank you for being here. We wish you well and hope to see you all again. One minute. I give the uh, maybe share the community to future of cheese. Would you would like to make a donation to the temple? Yeah. Because it's cheese. Come to change what? Thank you so much. Yeah, me too. He's going to pray for your continued success in serving the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.